We've all been inundated with COVID-19 themed emails. Every company imaginable. Some more welcome than others. I'm glad my gym membership is suspending my payments while I can't go, and I'm glad my airline's keeping my status. But seriously, some of these companies, I feel like they're crossing a line. I'm Sharon Gatula, and today I'm joined with my co-founder, Laura Garfield, and Emily McGuire from Flourish and Grit. Emily, you're the expert. What do you recommend companies do in communicating through email in a time of crisis without crossing that line? So a lot of companies have disaster preparedness plans. Um, and if they're super organized, they might have crisis communication plans put together with um, all the information that a potential stakeholder would need to know uh, about the, the business continuity plan of that particular brand. However, we are living in one giant crisis that's been impacted globally, right? So everybody's getting very similar messages about how businesses are continuing their operations uh, amidst a disaster that it really lends itself to a lot of inbox noise, which then leads people to start ignoring emails, which then reduces the impact of all of your other email communication going out. If everybody's getting emails they don't particularly care about because they all say the same thing, why are they going to keep opening their emails? So my advice is the advice that I would give anybody pre COVID-19, which is lead with value. Look at your audience and consider the pain points they are currently experiencing, the impacts of COVID-19 on their personal lives, maybe their professional lives, and if you're B2B, maybe their businesses, and speak to those pain points and how you can show up and be of service to people during a crisis. Now, Emily, this isn't like a one size fits all, like the answer is right now, because I feel like this is an evolving thing. Like if we were talking back in early March, fear was on everyone's mind. Now we're sitting here in April, things have definitely changed. You know, many of us have been sheltering at home for weeks. How do you evolve your messaging to make sure that you're being current to what people are experiencing? Two things. Uh, one is obviously this crisis is impacting people differently, depending on your profession, depending on your geography, where you live in the United States, we're seeing COVID spread um, and it'll hit different communities at different times and waves. If you know where your audience is located, if you have a, a geocentric sort of brand, then um, you'll be able to stay on top of how COVID is unfolding in your community. The second thing is social listening. If you are not on social media, listening to what people are talking about um, and where they are talking about it, uh, you're missing really critical conversations that are happening to help you stay on top of the tone you need to strike in all of your communications. Most of our clients we work with have an editorial calendar and obviously most of that's been thrown out the window. So how do you recommend people content plan when things change so quickly week to week? I love a good spreadsheet. I don't know about you, but I feel that pain. I love to plan. But if you don't have the flexibility in your marketing operations, you really miss out on what's happening now. And then on the reverse, if you don't plan anything, right, it can be a pretty chaotic mess. So what I really recommend is having just um, rough drafts, penciling things in essentially. And uh, what I've been doing for myself and my clients is having slots of times I want to be sending out content, whether that's email, social, whatever. So I have basically a bucket of content ideas ready to go um, so that I'm not a uh, pigeonholing myself into a topic that could be irrelevant tomorrow. 
Um, but also having topics uh, in the hopper ready to go. So if one's not going to work, I've got two more backup plans, right? Planning a little bit um, will go a long way right now, but not over planning where you're having to scrap everything and start over. Although we were all in that boat. Yeah, we were advising our clients to rip up their content plans and start over or at least put them on pause, right? For at least a couple of months. Um, one of the things you talk about a lot that resonates with me is that fear of pushing the send button. And probably now more than ever, when the messaging needs to be right, it needs to be, the tone has to be right. Um, you have to be clear. You don't want to put people off. I think now more than ever, that fear of pushing send can keep people from email marketing at all. What do you say to them? I don't know about you guys, but I it can be an overanalyzer and I suffer from analysis paralysis, right? I get so stuck in the minutia of things and I want things to be perfect and just right that I get terrified that I did something wrong. Uh, but the fact is we're all human uh, and no matter every single precaution we could take to make sure that our content is 100% accurate, chances are we're gonna mess up every once in a while, right? Even if you're trying your hardest. So what I tell people is that something is better than nothing. Just getting something out there and trying to connect as a human being to your audience who are also human beings, shocker, <laughs> uh, is, is going to be your best bet. Uh, just focusing on that connection and not the tiny little details um, will really help you get over the nausea of perfectionism, right? Emily, you always have the best advice if you are interested in upping your email game, check out flourishgrit.com and you can always check out our blog for more great ideas.